Blame and Blameworthiness. Hi, I'm Bri. This is an extension of my Philosophics blog at http colon slash slash philosophicsblog.wordpress.com, where I write about philosophical topics that I find interesting. I also engage in political and economic conversations. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. In this short segment, I'll ponder the notion of blame and worthiness of blame. Humans seem hardwired for blame as a natural response to an event. I believe that people will seek blame even where none is due, and I believe that this propensity to blame manifests in society and is codified by legal and jurisprudence systems. Individualist and collectivist cultures address this statutory blame differently, but I'll save this distinction for another segment. Before I get into the main subject matter, I'll explain why this is important. Desert. Restoration. And retribution, part of the discourse on justice. Desert is the idea of whether an agent deserves blame. One might want to blame someone for something, but this agent may or not be blameworthy. If not, there is no desert. I'll defer this topic to another segment as well. My focus in this segment is the process of how blame might be attributed, so I've illustrated a simple scenario. Let's follow the chain of events. In this scenario, I'm standing somewhere minding my own business. 1. Action. Unbeknownst to me, an action is already in motion. This motion will kick off an event chain. 2. Event. The cause of this action is currently unknown, but the result is an anvil falling on my head, Wiley Coyote style. 3. Reaction. The resultant reaction is an automatic, unconscious response, perhaps a pain response or maybe indignation. 4. Cause. In most cases, the affected will scan the environment for a cause. This might involve initially approximating the location of the source. 5. Assess. When scanning, one might systematically rule out obvious non-actors. Not a tree, not a parking meter, not a fence, and so on. Presumably inanimate objects will be summarily disqualified, but depending upon the source, one would assess a lower or higher degree of blameworthiness to connect this potential energy of blame. A. If the object is an inanimate object. Like a gust of wind that triggered the action, then blame might be directed to nature and the blustery day, but this will likely be short-lived. Perhaps your attention might be to attempt to determine who left the anvil in such a precarious state. Humans have a very strong urge to place this blame somewhere. Although a person might blame oneself for being in that place at that time. Or for not paying attention to the surroundings, this is less likely. B. If the object is deemed not a competent agent, it too may be considered not blameworthy, perhaps if a roadrunner, dog, a child or such trig, dared the action, they would escape blame. C. Even if an otherwise blameworthy actor caused the action, one might then assess the degree of intent or malice. Perhaps a person didn't see the anvil or stumbled into it causing it to fall. Whilst some might blame this person, perhaps depending on other circumstances, it's likely that society would not concur with your blame assessment. D. Finally, we have a situation where the agent not only intentionally set the anvil in motion, they also were amused by the result. You and most people would likely consider this person to be blameworthy, an agent who deserves to be the object of blame. 6. Sentiment. Finally, we have the longer standing notion of sentiment. Will you resent this person? Will you hold a grudge? Or will you forgive and forget? There is a lot more context in this space, the most important being in the domain of desert and retributive justice. My goal was to simply explore the initial blame mechanism. Given that I feel that blame is an irrational, or at least non-rational or pre-rational response, and my objection of desert in many cases based on causa sui grounds, I'll spend more time presently regarding downstream eventualities. So, there you have it. What are your thoughts on blame? What makes a person blameworthy? Can children and cognitively impaired persons be blameworthy? What about other sentient animals? In the past, some animals have been convicted of crimes in ecclesiastical courts and sentenced to punishment, including death. These animals included pigs, bulls, horses, eels, dogs and on at least one occasion, dolphins. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Consider subscribing to this channel. If you like this video, click like. If you want to be alerted when I publish more videos, click the bell icon. I'm Bri. This is my YouTube channel, and I blog at http colon slash slash philosophicsblog.wordpress.com. Check there and check back here for more content updates. Cheers.